pick real fast, everybody. Ready? There you go. Yeah. Woo! All right. Hey. All right. Hey, 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 I think we're going to give it a few seconds anyway for folks to kind of join in. So, did you get a good one? I think so. I'll do a second one just in case. I'll do Gordon, a second. You're a pro. You've got like a studio, a microphone. I know. Listen, I'm no, like, I literally got this mic because I've been doing so many podcasts. I'm like, I'm just going to just do it. Okay, vamos well, aquí. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about voting. Everybody, me gente, <laughs> let's vote. Guys, I just made that up. Are you a singer? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Hey, y'all, to everybody uh, who's joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm Julian Castro, um, former presidential candidate, former mayor of San Antonio, and uh, a, excited to be a senior advisor to Voto Latino, partnering with them to do what we can to make sure as many Latinas and Latinos vote in, uh, before or on November 3rd. And excited today. Uh, to be with two fantastic Zulai Anau and Gloria Calderon Kellett um, to talk about the importance of getting out to vote uh, for the Latino community and also address uh, a couple of the myths about voting and the Latino community. And you know, with that, I'll let each of them introduce themselves. Uh, whoever wants to start. Want to go with me? All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Gloria Calderon Kellett. Uh, I am, uh, I'm a West Coast Cuban American. My parents are both from uh, Operation Pedro Pan. They came in 1962 uh, under a government, you know, a program that was set up by many churches and, and volunteer groups. So the kindness of strangers uh, and, the, and the goodness of what this country can be, I am a direct uh, recipient of. To yeah. see what it was like for children to come unaccompanied uh, and and receive uh, aid and help and a path to citizenship. And in one generation, what can happen is when you can buy a home and send your child to college and, and grad school is that uh, you can have success in this country. It's it's really the American dream that I feel uh, I am I'm the beneficiary of. And so it makes me very loud and proud to speak up in terms of immigration and so many of the things that we care about as Latinos in our in our community, healthcare and jobs and all of that uh, is something that I'm very passionate about because I've seen firsthand how it's affected my own life. And, uh, you know, also the celebration of our community. I think that we come, uh, you know, yes, there are 20 countries under the umbrella of Latinidad, but we have so much more in common than, than not. And to be able to sit with one another and celebrate our differences and our similarities and also come together in terms of fighting for equality, uh, I think is, is really vital and, and it's what has made me politically active. So I'm really proud to be here today with Zulai and, and, and Julian. Nice. Hi guys, my name is Zulai Hanau. I am an East Coast um, daughter of Colombian immigrant parents. Um, like Gloria, I share your sentiment in that I'm really proud of being an immigrant Latina. My parents were hardworking um, people who instilled in me um, values, character, integrity, um, hard work. And for me, part of joining this call and part of um, getting, you know, activating my voice and using my voice for um, this year's election is that I've been, it, it saddens me what's, what's been going on the last four years. It's saddened me that some of our people, these older generations, don't feel like they have a place or a voice um, in this vote. And I'm here as an advocate for that, but also as a, as a student. I, I'm learning from you guys, and I would love to take this conversation and uh, bring it to you know my social platform and really encourage people to get involved, to educate ourselves. Um, on all the issues, like Gloria, uh, one of the issues that's very dear and near to me is the issue of immigration because I was that kid once. And like, I'm echoing everything Gloria said, I am the direct recipient of what it is in this country to have good people instill greatness in you, to have people believe in you. And I want that to still be the case for the kids, for all these kids that right now are kind of in limbo um, so yeah, let's demystify some of these myths that are keeping our people, you know, not going to the voting polls and 
Um, I'm super honored to be here with both of you, Julian and Gloria. Thank you so much, Foto Latino, for having me. And um, let's do this. We are we are in the race of our life, and we've got less than two weeks to go. So let's let's get to it. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, and my apologies. I think I'm having connection issues. It's one of those. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you got, those, you got uh, two chatty Latinas. Does. We'll keep it going. We'll keep it going while you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have known. Yeah, y'all, y'all are like a million times better than than the average person at being able to keep one of these things going. So I have every confidence. But hey, look, um, we know that that you know our Latinx community, uh, our Latino community, um, thirty two million potential voters this year, the largest non uh, white voting bloc for the first time in our country's history. Um, what are you all seeing out there? What are you hearing right now uh, from the community in terms of getting out to vote? Uh, well, I've really found that in, in my conversations, Gloria, um, you, in my conversations, what I'm finding is people who feel like it's a test that they're worried they can't pass. And I think that it's really arming people with information so that they can read. Because listen, I got a master's and I read through those propositions and things and I'm like, I don't know. It's very confusing. <laughs> yeah. It is really confusing for us non-politician yeah. brain people. So I think being able to trust uh, resources that are breaking down what the issues are and also giving people the freedom that if they just want to vote for president and vice president, they can just do that and turn it in. They don't have to go through everything. Of course, I think I think because I'm very civilly minded and I feel like this is so exciting that we can be a part of our local government, that we should take the time to read those things and to try to understand them and to mm -hmm. and to go. I'm sure Voto Latino has resources that people can call in and, and get guidance in terms of, of uh, how, how they should be voting and, and what makes the most sense so that people can read through it. But I think just demystifying that you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be like a, a political science major to vote. This is really something that is for the people. And so educate yourself as well as you can so that it's, it's in it's something that's in line with your with your belief system. And, and the most important thing is that you make your voice, one vote matters, every vote matters. And making sure that people feel that they can do it, that they are definitely qualified to do it. Yeah, and I just want to add one thing to that because I love everything that you said. Also for the younger generation, like it's really, for example, I sat with my mom. This is my dad's first time voting in this country. He's a naturalized citizen. And this wow. Time, he passed his, he's, you know, visiting me in California right now. But sitting with him and having him go through, like you said, Gloria, understanding what each proposition meant. But it's our job. It's, 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 it's our job to educate our theos and our theas and our, and our dads and our moms to why it's so important. A lot of them are like, you know, I, I, I don't think my vote matters. And I, I kind of also want to talk to those people that say, you know, I think it's elections are rigged and there's, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And like you, you did mention that Gloria, you know, Voto Latino has a great resource online that kind of takes every issue head on and demystifies it all and really explains to us why these issues are affecting us, how this vote is going to directly affect that specific issue. So it's like doing your work at home. It's a ripple effect. You do your work at home with your family. I'm so sorry, you guys, my dog. Okay. You do your ripple no, effect. It's all right. <laughs> We've got communication, dogs. Yeah. Um, it just builds. I think it's important to say that it, it builds, like the energy builds and it starts within your home. And then your mom might tell her friend and listen, I heard about this proposition. So it's just about communication. We can't stress right in life how important communication is, especially right now with those people that, you know, feel intimidated or feel that, like I mentioned earlier, don't have a place in the election. So, um, that's what I wanted to add. And there's, yeah, so Voto, votolatino.org has all of that great good stuff in there for those of you who are wondering where's a good um, place for resources. Because even I oh, myself- that. Perfect, it's right there. That's Look. right, it should be on the screen, I think. Uh, make perfect. a plan to vote at votolatino.org slash election center. Yeah, and I mean, y'all are right that there's so many, so for the Latino community this year, 
so many compelling reasons to get out there and to participate, to vote. I mean, when we think about um, how many people right now are affected by the coronavirus, uh, how many people push a lot of work or small businesses that are still shuttered, the fact that approach that has been marked by cruelty, and we were just reminded of that, uh, these 545 children who are still separated from their parents, their parents have not been found. Um, we, we have so many reasons to get out there and to express uh, our opinion through our vote. Um, at the same time, as you said, we know there is disinformation out there. We know that there are folks trying to undermine participation by, uh, by the Latino community. Um, tell me a little bit, uh, if y'all could, about what, what is your plan to vote? Have you voted already? Are you going to vote? Uh, talk to me about what's your plan to get out voted. there and vote. I did there too. Go. My mom. <laughs> go ahead, Gloria. Finish your story. No, I'm no, so you, go. you go first this time, love. You go. My, my, <laughs> my mom and I have had this. Uh, we have like little every. You know, we vote together and we go out and we make lunch out of it and we wear our stickers and we post selfies. So. This year was a little different. We know we couldn't, we didn't go to the ballot box. I said, mom, we have to do this by mail this time. It's so important that we vote early. I was a little bit scared, but I'm gonna talk about that too. So we did, we sat, it took us like two hours to go through everything and we voted as we always do together. We took our pictures and there's a sense of pride that I really love seeing in my mom's face that never gets old. As the person who brought me here as a child, four years old, I wanna go back to those 545 kids. The DREAM Act is sitting in limbo right now and our vote could, will change that. Our vote will create a pathway for, uh, for immigration reform in, in this election. I think that's important to say because we we're, that is being held back and our voice is so important. It directly affects all those kids that are sitting there right now without their parents. So we can't, we can't stress enough how, um, how important this vote is. And, you know, my mom was, she watched, what documentary was it that touched on that specifically? And she came to me with tears in her eyes and I said, yeah, mom, do you understand now? She's like, yeah, I get it. I understand. So we are we we had a great time doing it, and now my 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 sister took my dad under her wing, and that was her responsibility, and they voted. So it was just a beautiful time. I love it. Same, same. My parents came over, and yeah. we we're real Latino. They live across the street. That's how next level Latino we are. So they came when they crossed the street, and we all sat down and had a little lunch, and we went through all the issues, and we talked through everything, and we also, it's really helpful also to see who supports what, who doesn't. We had a couple of disagreements, not on president, we all agreed on that. And then we went to our local library, which has a drop-off box there, an official drop-off box. And we took our photos, putting it into the, <laughs> into the little drop-off box. But yeah, we want to encourage people to go early too. Go early and, and, and get it done and make sure. And what's also wonderful is there's a, little, um, there's a little thing on the corner so that you can look up. It took about 96 hours. And my vote was, it says counted and you can check and it feels good to know, okay, I did it and I know it was counted. And there's something that, that especially for so many of us whose parents yeah. left their country because of, of you know, a, a, a communist dictatorship or, or a, a government that was, that was letting them down. And so voting means a great deal to us because of that. It really is our freedom of, of choice. Amen. I wanna say I'm in California. Absolutely. Well, you know Go ahead, Julian. Oh, no, please, please, go ahead. I just wanted to add. No, I was just to say that I, I'm. Oh, we're having a time lag. <laughs> yeah. Julian, go, go, go. Julian, you go, I'll direct yes. this. <laughs> uh, I was just saying, yes, yeah, sorry for the, sorry for the delay. Hey, uh, I was gonna say that I am the odd one out, unfortunately. Um, I have not yet voted, but the other day I went down um, with my wife to the place around the block, the St. Paul Community Center here in San Antonio where you can vote. We cut a video because it was educator voting day and she's a public school educator. And then she went in to vote 
and I had to rush home to do a Zoom event. <laughs> so I am going to vote early, uh, probably on Monday or Tuesday, but I have not yet voted. So don't be like me. Go and vote before <laughs> Monday or Tuesday. Follow the example of these two amazing women and, and vote as soon as you can. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. And people are talking about the options in their state, which is so great. Uh, some some curbside options. The power. So someone's asking about Latinx voting power in swing states. Right. It's critical. It's so critical. Um, I think that's why we really need to rally and and demystify uh, any issues that any community members are having. You know, this is you know, like Zule was saying, like it is a time to talk to tias and tios and get them out and cousins and 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 make it an event. You know of course, social distance and, and masks and all of that, but making sure that, that you go through it and do a Zoom. My husband's going to do a Zoom with his family members to talk them through stuff so that they can all kind of have a little connection and, and talk about the issues. And I think that's a really wonderful uh, idea. Holding each other accountable. I love it. Julian, are you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would just add to the question that was on there, and sorry for the delay on my end. Uh, that you know, we have, I, we have this tremendous opportunity in the Latinx community in several swing states, new swing states like Arizona and Texas. Today, the latest poll came out of Texas: Biden forty-nine, Trump forty-eight. Wow. That's how close it is here. Wow. Could well make up more than 20% of the vote here in the state of Texas. Uh, but also, of course, Florida communities like Georgia. So there's a lot of opportunity to have a strong voice and determine the outcome of the election. I also want to, I see, I'm looking at this now. Today is a nationwide initiative for women are voting. So today's a really good um, day for you ladies to get out and vote. I mean, Gloria and I already did, so we can't <laughs> But the hashtag is women are voting. And I mean, it could be really cute. You guys at the, you know, at the poll, at the, at the drop on TikTok, do a TikTok, yeah, TikTok. thing up to the poll and putting, you know. <laughs> but I, I think we should also address the fact that a lot of people, for example, in California, there was a lot of talk about fake ballot boxes. So I called City Hall and I got a woman on the phone, she reassured me, she told me where to go. So guys, don't be afraid to, you know, to call your local representatives to do your due diligence. While those things, there are talks of that. And, you know, I felt really comfortable after I got off the phone. It's really all about doing your research, doing your due diligence, making the calls if you feel uncomfortable. After I got off the phone, I felt very uh, reassured. Even was speaking to Maria Teresa on the um, impact council uh, meeting, there's really nothing so, so, so um, strong that says that these things are really happening, that this kind of things happen or that we, our votes are not going to count. So let's, there's no evidence for that really at this point. So let's vote by mail. It's, it's working. It will work. Your vote will count. You can also track it like Gloria said. And I think Voto Latino has done such an amazing job, not only of reg registering, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, but also really providing resources and safe ways. A lot of people are asking, what are safe ways? How can I look that up? You can look all of that up to find out what is the safest way for you to do some early voting. And there will be there will be strategies there for you. The biggest thing is to make a plan, make a plan that makes you feel comfortable and makes you feel safe that you feel like you can do in whatever state that you're in. And you can look it up through Voto Latino and they'll do it state by state so that you can have an idea of what to do and then do it, get out there and do it. This is, you know, for me, and I, I think for many of us, we, we are very proud of where we come from and who we are. And I think that there is still a huge misconception. Somebody was asking about why, why do they come for Latinos the last month? It's always that, right? They always come for us the last month and say, oh, Latinos, we really, you mean a lot to us. I'll tell you why I think, I think because it, we are not loud enough throughout the year. And I think that we need to really sit in our power as a community that is vital to this country 
that that our work, our farm workers are who is feeding this country in this pandemic, right? Our, our, so many of our domestic workers are the ones that are making it possible for people to return to work because they're watching their children. We are so vital in the fabric of, of this country. And so I think we really need to vote to show that we, we are here and our vote matters, but also to be vocal and to say, this is a community that we are proud of. We have been wildly misrepresented in the press. We have been wildly misrepresented from this White House and how we are talked about. And I think that righting that wrong by standing together and claiming our space is really important. So right. that, that's that's a thing that I think we can really Absolutely. do in unity and solidarity. We have earned the right to make demands. That's all it is. We've earned the right to make demands. We contribute in so many amazing ways. Uh, like you said, our, our farm workers, but we contribute to the economy, we contribute to culture, we contribute to the arts and entertainment. We are a big part of this community. And if we, and I agree with you, Gloria, when you say that, you know, in part, it's because we're not loud enough. We have to believe like viscerally and th that we belong. Because if we don't start believing that with everything in us, we are going to continue to be left out and no more. You know, my, my dad voted for the first time. He now feels empowered. He feels, you know, happy. He, he wants to track his vote. I'm like, dad, you just put it in yesterday. You gotta give it a minute. So it does instill a certain amount of, um, of what is it, you know, energy and pride and, and you're, you're, you're excited to be a part of this beautiful country and, and, and of our democracy that has given us so much. So I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. Hey, y'all, and, and I know that, that we only have a, a couple of minutes left, but I wanted to, to uh, just focus and touch on, you know, a couple of the myths surrounding getting out there and voting. Um, um, uh, uh, one of those being in a lot of places, for instance, people are worried about the very long lines of people in different localities waiting sometimes hours to vote. And that discourages some people, frankly. They say, ah, you know, I, I don't have five hours to go wait. Uh, right. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's important to remind everybody, number one, that, that that's not the usual course of affairs. Uh, and please ask around your friends, your neighbors who have gone to vote to figure out where, if you know, where is it most convenient? You know, where is there not as much of a line because Usually you can vote in more than one place during early voting. And usually on election day, you got to go to your actual polling precinct in many places. But but go to IWillVote.com or go to Voto Latino to find out more information. Um, another one, uh, sometimes it, it gets in the way is people who don't um, or they don't have confidence in it. And you know, we want to remind folks that uh, to please uh, look up and understand what the rules are around when you have to turn in your mail-in ballot, how you have to turn it in, because sometimes you have to put it in one envelope and then another envelope. And if you don't put it in yes. one, you only put it in one, but not two, then it's literally not counted in places like Pennsylvania. Um, so please, uh, you know, go to IWillVote.com, go to VotoLatino.org, uh, and also uh, talk to your local leadership about, uh, to find out more about the rules of voting in your area if you're going to vote by mail. But it is by mail. And so don't fall for the idea that that, um, that your vote doesn't mean anything. It absolutely does. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, we really just need to stand together in this moment and know that we are a powerful community. And once, you know, I, I really feel like uh, no politician is perfect. And I think that finding somebody that is aligned with your belief system and then holding them accountable to be better is where we start, is where we have these conversations. So this is a start, you know, this is a moment where I really wanna encourage the community, not just to come out and vote in this election, but be active after this election. In terms of holding our community accountable, if you feel as a Latino that, that Dems are pandering to you now, 
but they're not really interested, then we need to hold them accountable when, when, when we're up and running again, right? We need to say, okay, now we have, now X has happened. This is the, whatever the, the fallout of the election is. And how do we, how do you better represent our community? How do you care for us? I mean, the, the amount of, you know, COVID is, is killing our community at larger numbers than it is many Americans. All of these things are something that we can hold them accountable after the fact. So this is the first step in a long journey that we hope you will take with us. The first step is voting. So please get out there, please make a plan. It is critical. We have provided resources for you so that you can look them up and know that all of us are, so are on social media as well. So if I'm happy to always answer any questions or, or engage uh, in any way on, on my Instagram or Twitter. So please re reach out if there are any further questions that you have. It's been a tremendous honor to be here today with you guys. So good to be here with you guys. I love that you said no politician is perfect. And I'll just say that, you know, we are allowed to evolve. We're human. Let's just search our hearts and souls and see what it is, what, what, is, what are the issues that speak to us and vote on those issues. And then, like Gloria said, let's hold ourselves, ourselves accountable post the election and make our voices be heard across the board. Um, I'm honored to, to have shared this time and space with both of you today. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so excited. We are, we're going to turn out. I have, I'm so, I have this just great feeling that we're going to turn out in massive numbers and I couldn't be more proud of us. I love you, my people. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes. Thank both of you very much for all of your uh, activism and for using your platform to make sure that uh, more folks get out to vote, make their voice heard. And this is the moment to do it. We only have 12 days left. Uh, vote early. Definitely vote um, either before or on Election Day, November 3rd. Make your vote count. We can do it. All right? Thanks a lot, y'all. Thank you, guys. See Appreciate you later. You. Get out and vote. Get out and vote, everybody. Yeah, mi gente.